Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And they keep telling me I'm Sarah. And this episode is sponsored by Isaiah Caston. Thank you, Isaiah. Thank you. Thank you. Today we are joined by a very special guest acting as Percy Weasley in the Harry Potter films is Chris Rankin. Hello. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, so are we. We're We're so so excited. Super honored. (laughs) And Chris, before we do anything, I have to give you a fun fact. Uh Uh-huh. And it's okay if you don't remember. You're a very busy person. (laughs) It was actually two years ago today. At the 19 years later. At the Uh, 19 19 years later. later. We met you in Ollivander's. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I I need you a little button. You know, we don't expect you still have it. (laughs) It's okay. I will. It will be somewhere. I've got boxes (laughs) like buttons and ribbons and all sorts that. Yeah, because you know we go to all these events and people give us buttons, do, yeah. and ribbons, yeah. and stuff, and they get just go in. A, they go in a little box, so it will, it'll be in this. It'll be in this room somewhere. <laughs> we, sure. believe, we believe. Yeah. Yeah, we believe. Yeah. But I thought that was pretty cool that yeah. like two it years later today. we're talking yeah. again. I thought that was pretty amazing. I can't believe that was two years ago. It seems. I know. I know. Scary. That was one of the best nights. It was so rainy and then it cleared up and no that lines. part was really nice. Getting to yeah. go into Diagon Alley was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Back to Orlando. Yes. Yeah. We were fun. we were just was... there not too long ago. But oh. It was it was sweltering hot, but we had a great time. We got I to ride that. the new Hagrid ride. Oh, was how was it? It's it's good. Good. <laughs> I'm so desperate to get there, but it's yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> can't, just, can't just pop to Orlando from here, sadly. Yeah. So. I bet you if can you learn did, how to apparate. Yeah, they would let you probably walk on. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. Like, do you I know who I? <laughs> no, <laughs> no idea. Dance. In this ride, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It it's true. true. All right, so let's get going. Um, so first question. What is your Hogwarts house? I'm a Ravenclaw. Woohoo! Oh, okay. The best house. I Did am. You... Yeah. So do you feel like you connect with that really well? I do. I do. And I, I'm, yeah, I'm very definitely a Ravenclaw. I have, I know, I am a big uh, fact person. I like, I like my trivia. I like my knowledge. <laughs> I'm very helpful on a pub quiz team. Uh, <laughs> I, I won a, there's a TV show over here called uh, Pointless, which is basically, it's a bit like the opposite of um, Family Feud, where you have to get the least popular answer rather than oh, the most popular oh, answer. I like uh, that. That cool. And there's a celebrity version of it called Pointless Celebrities, um, which I won. <gasps> That's uh, awesome. With Congratulations. My useless, my useless information about random <laughs> stuff. Comes in handy. That is awesome. Um, so what is your wand? Now, that is a good question. Um, I haven't actually done the wand test. Oh, <gasps> Ooh, scandalous. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that and nobody good. actually, and I, because I always kind of default to going, oh, I'll just have Percy's, it'll be fine. Um, and then discovered <laughs> that nobody actually knows what Percy's wand is either. Oh, <laughs> well, like, in all, in all the Potterverse information, there is nothing about what Percy's wand is. Dear Joe. Yeah. Dear Joe, yeah. <laughs> and now, Dear and now Joe. she's disappeared off Twitter. We'll never know. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> Do you happen to know your Patronus? My Patronus is a wombat. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. a cool Richard, one. Really cool. Um, I do I've have had, a question, had, though. Oh, go for it. Well, how do you get a Patronus if you don't have a wand? <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just that magical. You don't have <laughs> You don't have to talk to her for the rest of the time. <laughs> We've got you. <laughs> I have a, I have a wand. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll accept okay. that answer. Sticky, wooden sticky thing. <laughs> he got do it you, off the tree outside. Do you connect with wombats? Like, do you think that that fits you? <laughs> do you connect with wombats? I do connect with wombats. I've had I've had my Patronus longer than Pottermore's been around, so it was it was chosen for me rather than oh. doing it that way. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, they're they're cute and cuddly, but you don't want to mess with them. Um, yes. And they do square poos. 
<laughs> That's amazing. Uh, we have an awful lot in common. I love that. <laughs> they do. They do little square poos and they stack them up in their burrows. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Information you never knew you'd find out on a Harry Potter podcast. I don't think podcast. interview needs to go any further. We need. <laughs> <everything> we need. <laughs> Thank you. I wish I, I wish I. I wish I connected with mine like that. What's yours? Uh, she says it's a. <laughs> she Joe says that it's a chestnut mare, but it just doesn't fit me. <laughs> she got like five horses. She took it a I million did. I, times. I like made different emails and signed up over and over. And every time I got a different <laughs> version of a horse, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I don't like horses. Be... I don't know. <sighs> In- endurance? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't Maybe. Know. Ooh, right? Yeah. Mine's like a that. vole, so mine <laughs> mine just doesn't have great qualities. I don't know. A, a vole. A vol. A Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor Katie got a dolphin. She doesn't even know how to swim. Yeah, I can't swim. But oh, maybe what? that is oh. the purpose of maybe it. Maybe they're carrying through the water. The purpose yeah. of the purpose. Yeah. <laughs> is it a purpose? Maybe. I don't know. That works for me. I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh. Wombat, though. I'm jealous. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a really cool one. I enjoy yeah. it. I'm, yeah, My original quite... was a, an osprey. A feisty bird, oh. if you will. Mm-hmm. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quite small, and so are they, apparently, as far as feisty little birds go. All right. <laughs> so here's um, where we really start rolling into some questions here. So what have you been up to since filming Potter? It's been a while. That Well, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> when did we look. finish? You can go with most recent, if you wish. <laughs> 2010, I think we finished filming. God, that was years oh, ago. Um, yeah. Well... So after after I finished on Harry Potter, basically when I was doing Harry Potter, when I hadn't I hadn't been in the fourth film, I have to go back a little bit of way here. I didn't do the fourth film, um, and from the book, Percy had quite a big part in the fourth book, so it was a little bit of a like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then I came back and did the fifth film, and then they didn't have me back for the sixth film, and that by that point I kind of worked out that obviously Percy's story isn't necessary. It's not important to the sort of the the main storyline is it, it yeah, doesn't, we get what you're no, saying. yeah at no point does percy actively do anything that helps fight voldemort he's like he's a little side plot and that's cool and it doesn't have anything to do with it so i get why it's kind of diminished somewhat from mm. the books um mm. but when they didn't then ask me back to do the sixth film i kind of went i'm probably out now this is this is probably it percy's done quietly shuffled off to the ministry and we'll never see him again that's Mm -hmm. all right I'm good with that but I probably need to go and get some qualifications um so (laughs) I uh, went to university seven years later than I should have done um and studied film production of course in the middle of that they then asked me to come back and do Deathly Hallows Um, (laughs) so I didn't do so well at uni in the end um but I did get my degree in me in film production so after we finished on Harry Potter I started working in on the other side of the camera um and i've been working yeah i did that for about seven or eight years really where are we stopped doing that full-time about a year and a half ago um but i worked on a show called da vinci's demons was my first Mm -hmm. job i was a production runner on that which is a big um i think it was stars or fx network out in the states um and then i worked on a show called atlantis which was the replacement for merlin bbc okay merlin um and then I went from that to a show which nobody saw, and it was absolutely terrible. But it was the most expensive, t- uh, most expensive TV pilot ever made for American TV, and it was called The Bastard Executioner. It was Kurt. Oh Sutter no! I no! Sutter I think Vanity. I watched like the first episode. Yeah, it was terrible. Because <laughs> I think there was like an actor in it that I really, really liked. I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch, and then I was like, oh, I don't remember what happened yeah. at all. <laughs> it's got like the best cast it's got yeah like, pe- oh god i can't remember any of them now which is awfully embarrassing but loads of people from like random people from sons of anarchy are in it mm-hmm. and then there's um oh, wow. uh, the guy from true blood whose name i've just forgotten who's married to anna packin steven somebody anyway oh, he played um Bill. yeah that's all yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you're i know who you're talking about which is like a big thing because yeah. i know yeah. no one yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah but it was and it was in theory it could have been great just never quite got there but it was a it was the biggest most expensive pilot ever made for wow. us tv and i worked on that and then i went to work on this little show that nobody's ever watched called downton abbey <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's amazing yeah i mean what happened with that so i worked on the last season of that and then um 
I've worked in house at a few production companies and done kind of bits and bobs. So I produce, I direct a bit now. I did I directed my first short last year, which has um, just been nominated for a uh, shortlisted for a film festival, which I'm quite excited about. Good for you. Um, Congratulations! And yeah, I do bits of all sorts. Still do a bit of acting, bit of this, bit of that. Yeah. YouTube started a YouTube channel. Yes, you did. Five. <laughs> Who does that? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so a bit of everything, and I, I kind of I like doing a bit of everything, and yeah, a lot yeah. of comic cons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love them. Which is crazy because I don't think that I have I go to a lot of comic cons in like the Ohio Midwest area, and I don't think that I've ever seen you at one in that area. I don't think I've done the Midwest. Mm-mm. No. Well, excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's not, it's, and sadly, it's not my call. It's whoever right. wants me gets me, basically. But yeah, if, yeah. if the Midwest come calling, I'll, I'll be right there. But, there was this yeah. one that's in that they Steel used to City. get a ton of Potter. Yeah. Like um, Tom Felton went one time. James Phelps, and Oliver yeah. went one. Yeah. Matthew, yeah. Lewis. Yeah. Matthew Lewis. Matthew yeah. Lewis. Yeah. They've just like dropped off with Potter for some. Actually, they just got Jason Isaacs the last time. But oh, he was like good. literally, he was added yeah. like two last days minute. before. He and is I a was like, good oh, guest. I got any plans, and he's so funny. That's what I've heard. Yeah. I've, I've, um, I've never been to a con. I've never either. Oh, they're fun. Yeah. So yeah. the what? first well, con I'll go to. Con. So the first con I'll go to, I'm, we're actually on a panel. So we're doing LeakyCon Boston. Ah, I'll see you there. Yeah. No way, really. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Let's hang because awesome. we told we've been trying to get LeakyCon to get James to come too. I like, yeah, and I was back. like, if you he, get there, I will buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just did Boston, uh, not Boston, Dallas. He did Dallas, Dallas yes. with them. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, no, I'll be at Boston, so that would be awesome. Fun. awesome. Maybe we have to cool. say hi in person. Oh, uh, we will definitely do that. We'll that get you great. a new button. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll I'll try and dig my other one out from the box of box It'll of bits. It'll be purple. <laughs> it will be purple. Yeah. I can I've I've got that. <laughs> and you kind of have been to a con because um the 19 years later was like a mini. Yeah. That's mini. true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's more true. of a gather. More of a gathering than a like yeah. full blown yeah. con. What a yeah. special experience that was, though. Yeah. Like, it was so much fun. It was so good. It was so great. It was really cool. And Luke Youngblood's going to be in Boston, too, mm. and he was yes. 19 years yes, later. Yes, he was. We didn't, meet him. Uh, we didn't get to meet him, no. We didn't get to meet him. I love Luke. He's such a sweetheart. He's honestly, like, the nicest guy ever. Yeah. He uh, sounded like it up on stage. He's, My, like, yeah. the coolest-looking dude. Like, he's got awesome yes. style. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He really does. Yeah. And he's the, same, he's the same age as me. Well, he's, like, a year younger than me and looks about... 18 and it's sickening. He's got that baby face feature going on. Yeah, he's disgusting. Um, my husband, <laughs> my husband loves watching him in uh, Gallivant. I oh, haven't seen him? Gallivant. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, so that's it's, it's yeah, yeah. over. Yeah, but it's which very is good. super sad. But it's such a great show. But my husband loves watching it. Like he's watched it probably three times through. Yeah. And I was like, I might get to meet that guy. <laughs> <laughs> they, filmed, they filmed that literally like 20 miles down the road from where I am right now, just over the I'm um, oh, South oh, Wales, and they filmed that in Bristol. Um, but I don't think it ever really showed. I think it showed on like some really random Sky cable channel here oh, at like really? two in the morning. It never. It's oh, never, man. never done it over here. It's got but. like a little following over here that I know of, because like some people that I've talked to like loved yeah. the show, like I big like time. Anything musical, so yeah. right up my alley. Yeah, it's <laughs> really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, it's Next my turn. Question. It is my turn. Okay. <laughs> um. So, like we mentioned before, we did get to chat with James Payton earlier a couple weeks ago. Um. Yeah. And. I think I remembered what he wanted us oh, to say. Yes. So we asked him if he wanted us to tell you anything whenever oh, we no. chatted with you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, tell Chris and Nessa that I say hi and that I love them. And that um, he still doesn't know who Jeffree Star is. Oh, well, that. <laughs> I'm kind of relieved about that. <laughs> We know he can get a little frisky. Yeah. And <laughs> there's a lot of that's what she said jokes on the last yeah. time. <laughs> that, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Ness, well, Ness especially, my other half, is 
pretty obsessed with Jeffrey. We've just been watching some Jeffrey Star videos, actually. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think I, for some reason we just we ended up talking about Jeffrey Star in a in a hotel bar in the middle of a convention. <laughs> um, and decided it was something that James ought to see, but I actually think the world might break. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine James Payton like following a? Uh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe that'll be a YouTube video. I could get James Payton to follow a Jeffrey Star makeup tutorial. Do it. Oh, oh my do it. god! Oh my gosh! Do yes, it. please. Right. I'm on board with this. Putting that on the list. More oh, content. <laughs> I would share the heck out of that. Yeah. Oh, it would, I think, yeah, I th- we would break the internet. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we just wanted to know what it is like hanging out with James. Cause you guys seem like you're good friends. We are good friends. Um, we met, we met because we have the, we have the same, um, agent. So we often right. get booked to go to the same events together, which is delightful. Um, he is, oh, he's just, he's delightful. He's such a sweetheart. And he is very, very naughty at the same time. Um, <laughs> it's the best kind of people. Yeah, yeah he's the kind, he's that kind of friend that you want because, like, he's he's kind and he's considerate and he's caring and he's genuine, but at the same time, you know that he'll be the first person to instigate naughtiness. You know, <laughs> like it'll be his it'll be his naughty idea that gets you into trouble, and he'll be fine. He'll sit there with that little angelic <laughs> look on his face oh while you're getting shouted at for something. But yeah, no, I love James. He's he's um, yeah, he's a, he's a special one. <laughs> he is make indeed. make of that what you will. <laughs> <laughs> Diving into uh, some more Potter related questions, do you have a favorite Potter film? Oh, film. Mm-hmm. Like, which of them would be your favorite? Whether it's because it was related to maybe a scene you enjoyed filming, or just in general, you just enjoy watching it. I think my I think my favorite one to watch is actually um, ah, Half Blood Prince, mm. sixth one, um, which I'm not in. Um, <laughs> but I think I think there's an awful lot that happens in that story that I think translated actually really really well to the film. Um, and it is yeah, it's the sixth book where it's the book that is just like you need to read this so you know everything that's going on before we get on to the seventh one. It, the, I seem to remember from the book that there's not an awful lot of story. There's, there's a lot of backstory and a lot of information, and I think they handled it quite well. Um, yeah, I think I think it is the Half Blood Prince film. I think would be my favorite film to watch. Whether it's because I'm not in it that I enjoy, <laughs> I can enjoy watching it. Um, is it be. hard to watch yourself? Mm, it's harder to listen. Mm. Like, okay. That is a question we get asked a lot, actually. And I think what I always say is that like, I look at myself in a mirror every day. I know what I look like. There's nothing I can do about this. But your voice <laughs> in your head sounds... And you guys will know this because yeah. I'm sure you listen back. Yes. Your voice does not sound like what you think it sounds like in your head. And no, it's very not true. at all. When it's coming out in Dolby Surround, it's quite hideous. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's it's weird. The other weird thing about watching yourself, I think, is that, well, for me, and I don't know, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, it's weird because when I, when you watch, like, for instance, um, the first film when Percy's taking all the Gryffindors to the portrait, in the mm-hmm. right at the beginning when we're going up to the common room um what i remember seeing is not what you see oh, yeah. on the film i see everything the other way around right so yeah. I, re- I remember that scene with a load of people stood behind me i don't remember what they looked like or <laughs> but they were behind me i remember yeah. the camera crew and the guy with the boom mic over me and like you know people with reflector boards and lights and so it's re- it's weird it's like seeing all your memories in reverse i don't know it's very very peculiar yeah Um, that's a cool way to put it yeah Yeah. that's very interesting different it is different (laughs) i mean yeah you can't escape watching the harry potter films because they're always on telly yeah they're on right now yep really Mm -hmm. yes (laughs) i literally watched that scene this morning i think i think i saw that half blood was on uh one of the networks tnt sci-fi or something like this oh right okay huge marathon this weekend because oh september September 1st hey happy happy september 1st happy september 1st it's the hogwarts day yay um 
Yeah, we have a lot less channels than you guys do, so they're on slightly less frequently here. But probably thing. <laughs> I mean, almost every weekend, I swear, is a Harry Potter weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm that's and that's that's absolutely fine. <laughs> I get my 35p every time, all of the <laughs> year or whatever it is, but it's grand. Yeah. <laughs> Um, did you read any of the books? And if you did, which one was your favorite? I read all the books. I was, I'm, I'm like full on, fully committed Harry Potter fanboy, and I was before we, before we started oh. making the films. I love I read, that. I I'd love read, it. I'd read, I think I read the, I read, I started reading when the second book came out. Mm-hmm. Um, my mum is an English teacher, and she taught at the high school I went to. So and like before even before I went to the high school because I was an English teacher and so I kind of I was a bit of a I had to read books you know I was a, and I like reading it's great um, but the school librarian would send my mum home every summer holiday with like a big stack of books that had been sent through from I don't know wherever libraries get their books in a kind of get Chris to read these whatever he likes or whatever he thinks is worth having we'll get a few copies for the school library and one year it was the first two Harry Potter books. And literally, I sat in a tent on the Isle of Wight where we used to go on holiday every year and read both of them in like a day and a half. And then the okay. third book came out pretty much straight away. So I got that, read that, and I was, yeah, completely hooked. Yeah. Straight from the beginning. I love that. You were a that. library guinea pig. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> is that a bad thing? I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That sounds awesome. I love that your mom is a teacher. I'm a teacher too. So I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Teacher, teachers do not get enough good reviews quite Thank frankly you. Thank agreed. You. Agreed. I, I teach you the little ones oh do oh even i better. teach you how to read i teach first <laughs> grade over here that's adorable yeah no my mum my mum does uh i mean my mum's incredible she's 70 oh god i'm gonna get her age wrong now which will kill me again <laughs> 72 i think yeah 72 and teaching i think she teaches a level which is uh 17 to 18 okay yeah. wow but yeah so she's she's great she's bonkers and mad and yeah <laughs> unstoppable but i yeah I could, ne- I could never teach never teach no 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 not for me me either <laughs> and that's okay yeah <laughs> it's not for everybody <laughs> so which one is your favorite book do you have one uh it's chamber of secrets oh nice. okay which apparently is a not common choice that is true i, I feel like say, that's, that's the one that people say is their least favorite even yeah. though we obviously love all of them right but out of the seven that's a lot of people's most least favorite it's actually one of it's one of my favorite films actually because okay. it was the only one i had so i spent forever watching it over and over and over and yeah. over again so it became one of my favorites kind of like a nostalgia uh thing when it yeah. comes on takes you back to a yeah. moment in time in your life oh it oh yeah it does it yeah. really does 2003 two 2002 wasn't it oh, yeah. gross it was a long yeah time. i yeah. how is Sorcerer it sorcerer stone does that for me because i was yeah. just my poor parents they took <laughs> <laughs> i i'm an only child and this is same, this is, um, same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um this is definitely one of my only children moments i think uh, my parents took me to see Sorcerer Stone in theaters like over 20 times because wow. I was just. <laughs> but it was like at a not like wow. you weren't paying full price. Like you no, went no. on the day that it was like a cheaper. It was like a discount. Well, thing. Yeah, that's it, still it, like it came it's out. I mean, <laughs> it is still a lot. It came out during Christmas break, and we like basically went a ton during Christmas yeah. break when it first came out. Yeah. And then after that, it moved to like the cheap theater in town for like a long time. They kept movies for forever, <laughs> but it was only like three dollars to get in or two dollars maybe gosh they must love you i know my dad (laughs) like like it's bad my dad can even quote sorcerer stuff (laughs) (laughs) he's not even a potter fan (laughs) to be fair i don't think i could get through it like (laughs) quoting it anymore but yeah no i think i think yeah i think chamber secrets would be my favorite that's awesome i I think yeah like i think i just think it's a nice fully rounded story yeah. you're right yeah. i can't get behind and, it, and it's got a proper baddie like tom riddle's a mm-hmm. proper yeah. traditional old school villain and yeah. i really like that yeah i also like that you get to see kind of like even though it's a little 
scary at points, but like everyday life Hogwarts. Yeah. You get yeah. a little bit more of that than the first one. Cause the first one was like more of a setup. Intro. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And Harry's still young and not really innocent, not but so more scary. innocent but than it, compared yeah. to like Deathly Hallows. <laughs> a little bit more yeah. Just a giant snake or one of the pipes. It's, it's just like a snake that kills people. No big deal. Yeah. I just whisper at the walls. It's all fine. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. gonna ask if you give us a parcel tongue impression. I was like, nah, I won't go there. But you did oh, oh, I did it for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, so far now. <laughs> We're gonna ask you some weird stuff. No. <laughs> what um what class would you want to take the most at Hogwarts? Oh, um Transfiguration for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a cool yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Turning things into other things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? It's like it's like that's proper magic 101 right right yeah i feel that yeah yeah like i don't know maybe potions i I just feel some of some of the some of the academic ones are a little bit like why would you really agree potions would scare the daylight out i wouldn't mind potions but i like to cook and i yeah i've always mm. liked chemistry classes so like to me that goes together. Would that be my favorite class? No, I kind of like charms. I said charms too when like, I answered. It'd be a fun this. one, you know. Yeah. Potions. Potions. What about you? Defense or care of magical creatures. Oh yeah. Mm. That would be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be real good. Mm-hmm. You just want to have a class with Remus Lupin. Let's be real. <laughs> and I want to play with Nifflers. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always that. I don't. I somehow think Hagrid would be a terrible teacher, though. I mean, he is a terrible teacher, but he's a great guy. Those but uh, yes. <laughs> now listen, now listen. I mean, I don't disagree. Correct. I think he's a little enthusiastic, and I think, I think he just needs to remember that not everyone is a half giant. <laughs> <laughs> we have a set. We have a saying over here, and I don't know whether it made it over to you guys in the states or not. But there's a, there's an expression that is those who can do and those who can't teach, and I think. <laughs> Mostly that's inaccurate, but I think for Hagrid, that's probably the most <laughs> spot on. It made it here. Yeah. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God love Hagrid, but yeah. bless yeah. him. He doesn't always make the best choices. Yeah. He just is really excited. Good intentions. Correct. But, yeah, you know. but you know, good intentions paved the way to hell. So, <laughs> Have you ever heard that? The road yeah, to hell was paved that. with good intentions? Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that got deep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's back to me. And this is one of my favorite questions because The Deathly Hallows, that's my favorite book. Mm-hmm. Um, I have it tattooed on my side. It's not my... the book, but the symbol. Not the book. Oh, the... <laughs> yes, the symbol. It's a very rustic uh form of the Deathly Hallows symbol Lovely. tattooed on my side. I just love it so much. So my question for you is, which of the Deathly Hallows is the best in your opinion? And does that differ from the one that you would choose? Oh, oh, that's, 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 that's a, oh God, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, like I've been doing, I've been doing, I've been talking about Harry Potter like every day for probably 20 years nearly now. And most of the time I think I've probably answered every question under the sun and that's a new one. Um Ooh. Which takes me by surprise. So, um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I, I think my favorite would probably be the invisibility cloak okay. because it's actually practical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I agree. Like, there's something you can do with it, and it can be more than just like, this sort of really symbolic thing. It, it actually, you know, you can put it on and sneak around the corridors at night, okay. as we discovered. Sometimes um, I would like to be invisible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a little would. alone time. Yeah, you know? sounds straight. But I think <laughs> I don't know which one. I, oh, I don't know. I probably. I, I think I'd probably pick like the resurrect. I think I'd probably pick the resurrection stone as like as as my actual hallow. Yeah. I think that's like that one seems to have the most actual impact. I mean, the elder wand. Sure, it's powerful, but it's still a wand. Yeah, correct. Everybody yeah. has a wand, and mm-hmm. you can do most of the stuff you need to do with your wand. It doesn't need to be the elder wand. Um, but yeah, I think uh, yeah, probably the resurrection stone. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh, it's okay if you're unsure. <laughs> you look like if you in don't like know. 25 minutes time, I just come back to this. It'll be fine. <laughs> 
you can change your mind at any moment if you would like. Okay. That's your prerogative. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is kind of like a multi-part question, um, but in general, w- with your experience in filming the Potter films, who would you say was your favorite person to work with? Oh, it could be oh. a director, it could be someone behind the scenes, it could be an actor, any- anybody. I mean, I, that's another tricky one, actually, because every we this sounds so cliched because we've all said it so many times, but it was like, it was the happiest place to work. And it was like hanging out with your big family, your yeah. very big family. It was <laughs> nearly 2000 people a day worked on that film. Like, wow. It's not that mo- not that they were all there. Cause that's including right. like the CG animators and the people who are, you mm-hmm. know, off in far flung countries doing things on computers to make people fly on broomsticks and whatever. But yeah, like at the studios, there's probably several hundred people at least there every day from the people who clean our trailers to the people who make our lunches to the extras to the people who carve the statues and make the models and build the sets and do our makeup and our hair. Like there's hundreds and hundreds of people who are involved in that every day. And everybody was amazing. Like one of the things I used to love doing when we were there was you know because I was lucky that I was 16 when I started so I didn't have to do schooling like the rest of the kids did mm-hmm. I was a grown-up kid so mm-hmm. while they were off doing tutoring for three hours a day I could just do whatever I wanted basically um and like you could just wander into the art department and just go and sort of wander into somebody's office and go what are you doing and they'd be like oh well I'm making this little model set version of what we think the I don't know defense against the dark arts classroom is going to look like and these are all the little things I'm doing and and it was amazing because they would be totally cool with you just go and like I've worked on a lot of sets since and people are like get off I'm working Um, (laughs) but they were so patient with us and so kind of keen for us to understand what it was that was involved in making this film because obviously we were just kids and we didn't have the first idea none of us had worked well like three of us had worked in the industry before I hadn't I'd never you know the biggest audience I'd played to was like doing a musical with my local community theater group so Mm. that was amazing um Chris Columbus who directed the first two films was an absolute babe like the nicest man in the world that's so Uh, good to hear he was and he was I know the first two films sometimes people are like yeah they're so cheesy but they were kind of They were fine, but they were kids' films as well. And like that's the thing. It's difficult now because you have because you can watch all of the films in one sitting. Mm -hmm. But when they were coming out, the first film was designed for eleven year olds and the last film was designed for those same people who were now nearly twenty. Yes. So it followed me perfectly. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like it like it was perfect. Like when the first one came out, I was eleven and it was the perfect Mm -hmm. film for an eleven year old. You say that like the three of us aren't all the well, same yeah, age. Well, yeah, but, but like <laughs> Tiffany is older. <laughs> Not by much. I'm 31. Had, Woo. <laughs> and I'm 36 this year and it's terrifying. Um, <laughs> but, Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. <laughs> but I had that with the books. Like I was, I think I was 13 when I read the first two books. So I was kind of, I yeah, it was right almost there. progressed yeah. at the right age. So, um, but yeah, Chris was, Chris was great. And like, the amount of having now, di- and I only directed a short, a 15 minute short that was on the BBC that we fil- filmed in three days. And um, like the amount of pressure that was on me as the director in those three days to stick onto schedule, make sure we were getting everything we needed, all the shots covered, getting a good performance. Like so much yeah. is being asked of you. And yet at the same time, he was the coolest guy. He was the most laid back guy and it didn't matter how many times we screwed up as kids, how many times we laughed at, I don't yeah. know, Rupert chewing with his mouth open or <laughs> whatever it was, you know, like it didn't matter that we got giggly at three o'clock in the afternoon because it was late and we were getting tired and silly like you do. Yeah. It was always fine. It was mm-hmm. always fine. And he was just so lovely and so welcoming. And I, yeah, love him. Absolutely love him. And Julie I, Walters as your mum. I mean, like yeah, Julie Walters, right. the most cool. Yeah, oh yeah. It honestly, they everyone was. There wasn't a single person that I could name. I don't think. I, I mean, it's like I guess it's a bit like going to school. 
Like there's mm. people you don't really have an awful lot in common with that you're like, eh, whatever. But nobody was nobody was a <laughs> nobody. That's, that's good. <laughs> Honestly, it's ideal. Like people on the outside, like we obviously have no idea other than what we hear from the actors and actresses from the set or the people who work there. But it's so great to hear that you had such a wonderful experience mm. and it is as magical as we would dream it to be if we oh, were there. God. Totally, totally. Yeah. And like and it what it actually what like it felt like it was magical. I was probably a little older because I was sixteen. I when we started, I didn't really I could kind of see I could see past the magic as it were. But like the amount of effort they went to, like if this if this was a normal film for grown ups for a grown up cast, so much more of it I think would have probably been CGI'd. Mm. And yet the amount of practical effects they put in for us, so that we actually had physical things to react to to see like in the weasley house in the chamber of secrets and if you go to the studio tour or whatever you'll you see this at, at leavesden now that the practical things of like knitting knitting itself yeah that's basically awesome. there the things washing themselves up in the in the sink like mm-hmm. they didn't need to do that but it all adds to it for us and we mm-hmm, if we yeah. can see what's there like the only things really that we had to deal with were not having ghosts i guess right. mm. yeah like <laughs> I never met John Cleese. I ah. had like lines and lines of not lines and lines, but I had a few lines of dialogue with him. I, you know, we had a conversation on screen. Mm-hmm. Never, never even seen him in real life. Oh, no. <laughs> he was a tennis ball on a fishing line, but yeah. I love it. So crafty. Uh, it's magic. It is the magic of the tennis ball. <laughs> um, I'm gonna change up the wording in this a little bit, but like, what? What was it like? Like, like I know you you talk about how everybody on set was a family, but like specifically the Weasleys, was that like closer knit than maybe everybody else? Was like the Weasley family something more? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I guess. I we... Yeah, I guess to some extent. I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess to some extent, yes. Um, there's always this. There's always this slightly weird thing, like I said, because I was that little bit older, I didn't have to, I was sort of slightly separated from the kids in that there was this sort of, there was the children, so children's there, it sounds like a crash, but um, <laughs> like, like if you went to Leaves and Studios, there was, you, you went upstairs and then on the second sort of, there's a, like a mezzanine net level and then a sort of upstairs and that's where all the children's dressing rooms were and they were right next to where the school area was. So that's where they were all the time and Mm -hmm. that was everybody up to 15 yeah everyone up to 15 16 16 is the age you didn't need a chaperone and you didn't have to do education anymore so I was mostly separated from that because I was a Mm grown-up I wasn't I was still in you know I was still at school I was just I didn't have to be so they left me with piles of homework which I didn't do but (laughs) I mean why would you quite honestly um you know um (laughs) But yeah, I guess because um, certainly second film onwards, when the whole Weasley family kind of existed and we got to do stuff as a Weasley family other than run at a platform wall, right. which was the first, you know, that was the only thing we did really together was that on the first film. It wasn't until we did The Burrow that there was all of us there and we were kind of this unit. And there's not any other family units in that same kind of a way where where it's so kind of actually family orientated like there's i know there's the mm-hmm. malfoy stuff later on but that's not exactly you know They're loving not really it's family, not it's like not a loving family. nourishing yeah. atmosphere, <laughs> is it? let's yeah. face it um so yeah i guess yeah and like you know like bonnie was tiny when we started she was like she was. nine she was like nine years old on the first film oh. he's kind of wanted to kind of go no you stay here it's okay <laughs> <laughs> but, and julie walters and mark Williams who played our parents were awesome uh, Julie I mean Julie especially was she is like she's like a mum she's I was gonna ask yeah. did she mother you guys on set yes <laughs> oh yeah. I, love yeah, I love it so yeah. much yeah I she's her. yeah she's amazing she's Absolutely. in so many great films she too. is yeah. she, she just seems like a really a, funny person yeah never given a bad performance ever ever no, no. Like Mary Poppins. Yes. I love she was her so cute Mary in Poppins. that. Like, I want to cry about it. She's so cute in it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't 
for real to oh, cry. Yeah, my eyes are watering. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, have yet, I have yet to see the new Mary Poppins. So. Oh, so, so good. I also haven't seen it. I've not watched the whole thing. <laughs> Guys, get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Weasley's in it. I know. God. My bad. Man, Mel Miranda's in it. I mean, that should be an actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I enjoy him a lot. Right. Does someone want to ask the next question? I know they're all the same color. They're all uh, green right I now. Can go. I yeah, can go. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. Hey, we just didn't change the color. We just wanted you to talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you take anything home from the set? We won't no. tell. Other than everybody who's <laughs> listening now and in the future. <laughs> honestly, honest, and I, this is a question we get asked an awful lot, and it sounds like I'm lying, but <laughs> we we genuinely didn't. Like, I... some people have got stuff. Like, I did, I did. I was doing an event yesterday um, with Josh and Jamie, who play Crab and Goyle, mm-hmm. um, and they were talking about the fact they've got their the Slytherin rings that they got, I think, in the fifth film or the sixth film they started to get kind of a little bit like i don't know hip hoppy i guess it was a bit weird they're going <laughs> you know like all the slytherins got these like little slytherin rings that they wear and chains and stuff it got a bit weird um so they've got those but i tried to i did i tried to steal i well okay first story i took a i had a, fr- a friend of mine because way back like before before we started filming i was and way back when the internet was still a new thing mm-hmm. newish thing um i was on a harry potter fan forum like just as a as a normal human um and like used to post there um yeah and i had like this like this msn messenger network of friends that who had all met on the internet through this harry potter fan site uh, the name of which has completely escaped me um but anyway, it was amazing. And there was there was like, I don't know, 15, 20 of us who used to chat on MSN Messenger every day and whatever. And when when we were filming the first film, um, one of my friends, Steph, who's from Canada, she she was over in the UK and she came to the set with me. And it wasn't until after like two days later, she fessed up that she'd stolen a full set of uh, plate, knife, fork, spoon, <laughs> goblet from the Great Hall. <laughs> That's hilarious. A full dinner service from the Great Hall. Um, and I was like, you've done what? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't help it. Couldn't couldn't resist. Like, when, when am I going to get that opportunity again? Um, fair play. On um, the second film, I tried to steal my Percy jumper with the big P on it. Um, and I got it as far as the hotel before the costume department rang me up and asked me if I'd seen it. Um, and Aww. because I'm a, I'm a good boy and I'm a good boy and because I went to the same high school that my mum taught at I <laughs> had it sort of imprinted on me from an early age that I could not get away with anything without <laughs> like, my homework could never be late because you know most parents most people's parents wouldn't find out if their kids homework was late or whatever straight into the staff room at lunchtime <laughs> well, got back. so like I've always been I've always been very good and very conscious of doing the wrong I'm very like Percy I'm really like Percy <laughs> um, keep, every now and then I go oh god I actually just am Percy aren't I um but yeah so so I I took the jumper home with me when we finished filming the scenes that the jumper would be required for but they noticed and they pulled me up on it and I had to pretend that it had just accidentally fallen into my rucksack <laughs> <laughs> so really i think the really the only thing i've got a pair of shoes but they were they're the shoes that are on the bottom of percy's ministry suit um mm. but i was allowed those because they bought like 20 pairs of them so there was a nice smart pair and then when we were doing the battle of hogwarts there's a sort of scruffy pair that have all been sort of messed up and whatever and then there's a pair for the body double and a whatever spares and you know and they were just from top man which is just like a high street fashion store here and they're like 35 pounds so like yeah we've got 20 pairs of them have them you can go and buy them right now. <laughs> <laughs> not um, very exclusive yeah and then <laughs> like the spare bedroom in our house here is literally just full of every piece of paper that warner brothers has given me in the last 20 years <laughs> all the scripts all the script revisions all uh, the schedules call sheets a lot yeah so that's of most course. of what that's so awesome yeah that's really cool all right so 
if you weren't going to play Percy in a reboot or in general, in even reboot. Or, okay. or, or in general, because you could go, you know, pretend you older back character. In There's time turners. No, here. I'm saying even back then. Okay. Is what I meant. Whatever. Or <laughs> wow, you just got really passionate. <laughs> no, dude, just ruining my question. I can make it my own a little no. bit here. So okay, we'll do both. So if you could go back and play a different character than Percy, who would you play? And then if they reboot, who would you play? If I could go back, I, I mean, I, when I auditioned, I auditioned and I'd written off for an audition, so I'd like asked to play Percy. I guess is the best way of putting it. Um, there was never any, there was never any part I was ever going to get other than Percy because I was a sixteen <laughs> year old ginger school prefect and. I mean, it was destined. Apart from the fact I'm a new child, like I am Percy, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, like I don't know. I don't think any of the other students really didn't really appeal to me that much. Like I don't That's know. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lockhart would be fun. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of agree. That'd be a fun character to play. Yeah. Um, Especially if he'd actually had his full thing, like if they'd gone back and done the St. Mungo stuff properly. Yes. Oh my goodness, like, yes. That would have been amazing. Um, yeah. I like I like Lockhart as a character because I just I love how full of himself he is, and mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. must be that must be really fun to play. Um, if they rebooted, I mean, I'm obviously I'm actually too young to play Percy now. If they did it correctly, because I think he's just I think he turned forty three recently if you go by the book dates which are mm-hmm. terrifying um <laughs> so, i don't know like it'd be fun it would be fun to have a go at somebody a bit different yeah like i like that did you do anybody from say the dark side <laughs> oh yeah i mean the dark the dark character is always more fun to play anyway because like there's a reason there's a reason that somebody is bad there is never a reason that somebody's good they're just good Good is default. Like something, everybody's good until something happens to them to make You're them right, bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, sort of from an acting point of view, playing bad characters is, is way more interesting because there's always a reason behind it. Good is just n- normal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, you wouldn't want to take on Snape because that is legendary and would Correct. never ever be yeah. able to be beaten. Um, Agreed. It's legendary for sure. I don't know. I mean, I re- another another good friend of mine is um, Nick Moran, who plays Scabia, the Snatcher, mm. mm-hmm. and yeah. that and that is a fun part. Something yeah. like that is like sort of little cameo parts like that are always fun. I always yeah. think of that of- scene with Hermione, and it, it's like he like smells her perfume. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's oh really gosh. good. Well, that and makes then me he does that every re- time. And he does that really creepy sort of. Is it, what does he say? Is it hello, hello, beautiful? Yeah, it really yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. Creepy. Very creepy. creepy. Yeah. So parts like that where it's kind of where you come, you do your thing, you can go way over the top because then you're gone again, and it's. Like, <laughs> it, they're ideal cameo. Little cameo roles are always fun. Nice. Or maybe like a I don't know like Slughorn would be fun, but I'm too young for that still, and I don't know. There's always makeup. Yeah. There is always makeup. That's yeah. true. You would That's look true. great as an armchair. <laughs> uh, oh, I think. Thank you. I think. <laughs> It is coming from Katie. That's that's a, that's a thing. I'll take, it. I'll take it. I'm comfy. <laughs> Cozy kind of person. <laughs> okay. Uh, what was it like working with the trio on set? Mm. Ain't the kids and Darnold? Did you guys ever feel like you had to wrangle them? Oh yeah. Oh, sometimes <laughs> for sure. Sometimes, yeah. like they need wrangling. Like, <laughs> Emma never needed wrangling because well, you can imagine. Um, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, they were they were fun. But it like I think I think it has been so well documented how they were sort of as mm. themselves now. Like Emma was the bossy know-it-all goody two-shoes and Rupert just giggled all the time and Dan was so keen to know everything all the time um it was quite exhausting but (laughs) (laughs) but to be and to 
the one thing I will say, I love, I absolutely adore Rupert. I think he's, he's such, a, he's lovely. He's such a lovely guy. Um, but the one thing I will say is when we were filming Deathly Hallows, so this is when I was at university and I kept getting pulled away from university to go and film because I was doing film production. I had to work in a little team with a little film crew and obviously our, all our projects were to make films and I'd keep pissing off to London for like three months at a time <laughs> to go and be a wizard and they'd have to just get on with it without me, which was horrific because, you know, half my work was half their grade essentially. Um, so when we, when we, um, when I'd finished on Potter, I took um, my group. It was me. Uh, it was there was four of us, but two, one of them had gone by then. It was so there was two of us. My two friends at uni, um, Freya and Lauren. I took them down to Leaveson Studios to the studio, uh, sort of to go. Thank you for putting up with me while I've been away. And also, let's go and see what you know what the future looks like. This is what a real film set is, not what university are kind of trying to tell us it is um <laughs> you know, when we're making films with video cameras and like 30 pound budget this is a multi-million pound movie come and have a look um we bumped into daniel at like 8 a.m as he was coming out of the makeup room and said hello and i introduced him to my friends and said this is freya this is laura and he shook their hands and said nice to meet you freya nice to meet you laura you know i hope you have a really nice day i've got to go to work blah 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 um, and then we went, we did the studio thing. We went and watched them filming. I took them around, showed them all the sets and some of the other departments and stuff. And then like 6 p.m. that evening. So like a whole, what, 10 hours later or whatever, we bumped into Daniel again as he was rapping and leaving. And he rem- he'd remembered their names. Aww. And like, considering he'd been filming all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That I think that is how I sum up Daniel the best is he he's the face of one of the biggest film franchises in movie history. He is as an 11 year old boy, he was the face of this thing. And he is the person that, you know, you say Harry Potter, people mm-hmm. see Daniel Radcliffe. Mm-hmm. They don't, right. that's, that's who you see. He is yeah. the face of this thing and people for eternity will know that face. And the amount of responsibility that that kid had put on him, um, and the amount of responsibility he took upon himself to lead us as a troop of actors and to set the example to literally everybody. He would know everybody's names. He would remember what you were doing. He would ask you questions. He would be interested. And he'd remember two random strangers he'd never met before 10 hours late. Like, yeah. he's yeah, amazing. That's awesome. That's, awesome. That's so kind hearted. I cannot speak highly enough of him. He is an absolute babe. Um, <laughs> And exactly awesome. what you what exactly what you'd want, you know, you don't want some arsy little person who's like, oh no, I, you know, I'm the star <laughs> of this, so I'm going to go and sit in my trailer while people fan me and feed me grapes. It wasn't. That <laughs> right. was not. Yeah. That was literally the opposite. He would proper get down and dirty. He'd be trying to pick up camera equipment and help the riggers. You, you know what I mean? It's like we're all in this together, guys. And yeah. he's sort of leading the troops from the front. He's brilliant. That's awesome. That's so cool. That yeah, is, that's so wonderful to hear. Yeah, honestly, I love that so much. Sounds like uh, Dan should be a Hufflepuff. Just saying. <laughs> probably, to be honest, he probably would be. I think. Yeah. It's or a Huff, he's probably a Huff, He's probably a Huffleclaw, actually. Yeah. I reckon because he's he's another one that likes to know stuff. He has yeah. to know everything. Yeah. Like, see, I don't know, you know. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen like an interview with Dan where they ask him what his actual house is. No, I was just yeah. thinking that. Has like, he been somebody, I don't know. Some, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google right now. Um, <laughs> how great brain, you like to um, know about your friend. Hey, what house is this? <laughs> Let me just text him. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you know your second house? Second house? Yeah. Uh, yeah, do you think you'd identify with more than just one? There's like a, that big compilation quiz where it takes every single question. Also, no. speaking of, they released today, Pottermore did, that they're revamping the sorting quiz. I don't know oh, if I like oh, that. Bloody hell, not again. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, if I take this and I'm something other than Gryffindor, it's going to throw off yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. don't do it again. <laughs> I might know. not. I mean, She'll you know. do it. She'll get Slytherin. What would you do? Well, they I are very so. similar. Huh? They I would similar. agree. Yeah, we've had this conversation. Yeah. You're second Slytherin. I always yeah. thought it was Claw. Mm. Just because you're a teacher. You 
No, I took the the, the one quiz then. <laughs> I think I think I would probably be a, I think I'd probably be either a Gryffindor or a Hufflepuff. I think I'm not ambi- I'm not ambitious at all. Um, but I like to think I'm a loyal, kind friend, but and a little bit brave, but maybe not brave enough to actually be. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't I find out what Dan it doesn't say what Daniel is. I don't think he's actually done it. Okay. Huh. Interesting. It's holding out on us. All right. In all I've... of those backstage, yeah. behind the scenes yeah. videos they've put out, not one has uh, ever asked him. Uh, oh, he, they may have asked him. He may not have answered. True. true. Maybe. Maybe he doesn't want anybody to know. Maybe he wants to keep it a mystery. That's true. He kind of has to be Harry Potter, though, doesn't he? I suppose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So he probably has to say Gryffindor, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a question about being a Ravenclaw. How do you feel about the colors being different in the movie? Oh. And all of the merchandise. Um, to be honest, I've kind of forgotten. <laughs> like, Sarah's very passionate about this. Well, passionate. like in the long run, it, it saves me money, so I'm not going to buy my merch because I don't want it to be silver. So, I mean, it's not a horrible thing. I just don't spend money on it. You just want to be represented, sir. Yeah. Oh my yeah. Goodness. What, are the co- what are the colors originally? Bronze. Blue and bronze. And yeah. And it's an eagle, not a raven. Correct. So they changed yeah. it. Which is a bit, yeah, a bit weird. Because um, mm. raven. Claw. Anyway. Um, I like the I like the blue and silver. But I, to be honest, I'd completely forgotten that it wasn't <laughs> correct. <laughs> I, if I could find like I would be fine if I could find a blue and bronze tie and then I wouldn't care. Mm, but like the fact yeah. that like I don't want a blue and silver tie, that's all. Oh my god. <laughs> bronze doesn't read great on screen, I guess. Maybe. I think that's like they that yeah. was essentially like a their excuse. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and also like the Great Hall and all the walls at Hogwarts are basically brown. Right. So yeah. true. true. It'll be a bit brown. What was the typo on um the robes at Leavesden. Oh yeah, Katie and I got to go what? to Leavesden last fall. <laughs> and, right. uh, He's intrigued now. <laughs> on, so they they had this really cool behind the scenes thing that you could add extra to your ticket, where you got to get up close with like certain costumes that mm-hmm. weren't on display. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had robes that you could put on that were from Deathly Hollows, and they misspelled Ravenclaw on the robes, and they said like. Can't there was an extra R in it, I think. I think it said like R A V R E N. It was like Raven Claw. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and gosh. they had they had some of those there that we could see. That's and they cool. never it was fixed so cool. it. Yeah, you got to put on you got to put on robes from Deathly Hollows and they took your picture in them. That's pretty well, cool. Neat. I mean, I suppose we never actually saw robes up close in Deathly Hollows, did we? Right. So. Yeah, it was just like oh, I think the they're pretty messy in the, yeah. 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 In yeah. the background. Um, Except for that like that scene. scene did in you the point? Did you wall. point this out to anybody? They pointed it out. Oh yeah. To us. Oh, they did. Okay, yeah, they knew. Okay. So they knew. It. Yeah, they knew. About <laughs> they were up front. They were like, it. yeah, there's typos on, but it was too late at that point to reorder them. So they're yeah. like, it was just for the background anyway. So they yeah. just like let it go. I like stuff like that when you're like, oh, you, if you look in this scene, you'll see this is, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like the that Rocky also. Horror Picture Show is my favorite film to do that with. The Rocky yeah. Horror Picture Show is full of like terrible, terrible continuity <laughs> errors. I it's a movie. <laughs> I've never seen it. You've never seen what? it? No. Don't, don't. There's a movie theater that plays it. I think it's the first week in every month, and they do the whole thing. Isn't yeah. it at Gordon you... Square? No. It, no, they do it so. in way too. east. But, like, don't go if you want to enjoy it and watch it because there's people, like, there's a whole big thing they do yeah. during the whole movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't know. And you have to dress And up. I was like, oh, I wanted to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Or toast or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But it's um, it's the, I think it's the longest running. It's the film that's. Mm, been in the cinemas continuously the longest ever because it still shows once a yeah. week like there's a there's a uh, cinema in leicester square in london that shows it once a week at midnight on a friday or whatever it is yeah it's incredible it's been on since 1973 it's amazing um what was i saying yeah no when we when i go to the, i'm into the studio for a little while actually but whenever we go i take great delight in pointing out things to the See, I love stuff like that. I know it's my yeah. favorite. The the behind like, the behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, we spent all day there. Oh it yeah. It was like 
we booked a little like tour thing and it like had the bus that you rode and you took it in from London and it was like, okay, it's like a four hour block of time. And like, we looked at each other and we're like, <laughs> four hours. <laughs> what? Wait, what? You expect me to drive there and then do everything there in three hours and get back to what? I, I no. can't do, I can't go around. I can't get around the studio in four hours. Yeah, so I um, called the company and I was like, I will pay extra if we can be on the last bus. That would be great. And they like moved us to the very last bus. So we were there open to close. It was amazing. Great. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's easily done though. Like if you, if, and obviously there's a lot of people out there who are very serious about Harry Potter. You can spend all day there. Like there yeah. is yeah. easily enough to look at. And we do. could have been that there longer. Big room, do they have places they for you to eat? It, like the big room. Yeah, there's places to eat in the yeah. middle. Cool. Um, the big room took us like the first whole half of the day to go through. Yeah. And that has like <gasps> I the burrow, go so the Gryffindor common room, um, potions, the potions, Malfoy room. Manor, my common room. Yeah, the Ministry really cool. of Magic little like oh, window thingy. This cool. I want to go. Yeah, we'll we gotta go. go. Maybe it's, my, there it's one of my favorite places. I absolutely love it there. Oh. And they've done it so nice. Like it's so well thought out and so well laid out and we it's quite beautiful. like like when we go to when we go to events and I'm talking to kids and I say oh have you been to the studio tour and like they're like yeah or they no actually when when they're like oh no we're going soon and the parent you can see the dads in the background kind of going yeah go, go. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what's really what I really like about it is that as a Harry Potter fan you can go and have the best day of your life looking at all the Harry Potter sets and all the stuff about how the films were made yeah. even if you don't give two hoots about harry potter it's still really interesting to look yeah. at how a multi-million dollar movie is made like right. you see dad's yeah. kind of in the queue trying to waiting for the bit where you go into the little cinema room at the start and they're starting to eye roll and check the time and you know <laughs> starting to thumb through facebook on their phones and then like you see them later on say in like the art department bit or the sort of prosthetics area and they are fully into it like yeah. they don't care about Harry Potter. They don't know anything about Harry Potter, but it's just it's so awesome. There's so yeah. there's so much info and so much to see and do that it it doesn't really matter if you don't even know anything about Harry Potter. It's just it's still really mm -hmm. so good, so good. Yeah, you get to like push little buttons and make things yeah. happen. You get your little passport <laughs> stamped. It's yeah. Cool. See how the werewolf thing like moves. I want to push cool. buttons and make things happen. Yeah, you get to make the monster book of monsters we'll like come to people. London and we'll take you. Thank I want to go so bad. We're going to save our pennies and hopefully get over there within the next couple of years. Do yeah. it. Yeah. I might yeah. even come to the studios with you. <gasps> Do it. Listen. <laughs> I'll buy you a butterbeer. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you give us a, a tour. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. That would literally be so cool <laughs> no because she like knows all that cool stuff like yeah. okay we like, know what this is a great hall it. but like you tell me some You'd fun be the best stories guy. Yeah. <laughs> i love go we take like because we've got friends and i grew up in new zealand so i've got family in new zealand like when my nieces and nephew were younger um about four or five years ago they came over and it was the first time they'd been since the studio tour had opened so i got to take them and show them around and it's like taking people oh. there is just so, it's so much fun <sighs> That's so we'll cool. We'll have to get over there. I don't know. Yeah. It's not often you can kind of go, this is where I worked. Like, yeah. Right, right. yeah. That's so That's amazing. Awesome. Especially in like TV and film, because quite often you rap and everything just ends up in the bin. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, I guess you're, you're leaving for the last day and they've already ripped everything down. It's going in the skip as you're talking. So <laughs> <laughs> They saved everything for Potter. Oh, yeah. Well, they did a yeah. lot. It sounds like they did a lot with Game of Thrones as well. Mm -hmm. um, like... The guy All that the played Jamie, he wanted to take his hand, and they're like, no, because it's there's gonna be like a tour of like <laughs> yeah. game of stuff going. Over yeah. Oh, totally, yeah. Well, I think no, I think it's gonna, I think it's going to go on tour, oh, and then it's it. probably gonna stay. Oh, like the exhibition. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. exhibition. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. not like not like Game of Thrones the musical. That would be, <laughs> like, it's not like going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great though? That'd be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that. Someone will do it. Just wait. There's got to be a spoof somewhere, right? Somewhere. Speaking sure. of, have you, did you guys get to see Puffs? Yeah. Yes. yes. We're obsessed. We were just watching it last night. <laughs> it's so good. Yes. We actually went the final weekend in New York City. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was really good. It was so good. We, we quote it daily. Yeah. Yeah. We saw it in New York in, um, when were we there? March. 
Yeah. And it, honestly, I've never laughed so hard. I'm so good. Good. It's so good. Hilarious. So good. So good. And they're such nice guys as well. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, I don't know. I'm really, I, I hope it comes back soon. Like, I know. Yeah, I know. Somewhere. Well, you can always watch it on Amazon. Oh, don't iTunes. worry. We have, oh, sorry. Smacking my microphone with money. We, we have we have downloaded it on iTunes or Amazon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we just watched. Yeah. yeah, we were watching it last night and the night before. Oh, my <laughs> God. It's just, it's just so good. I just keep messaging Matt Cox, who wrote it, going, when is it coming to London? When is yeah. it coming to London? Yeah. Will I get sued oh. by Warner Brothers if you cast me as the narrator? <laughs> oh. They would be so good. I would. <laughs> oh, my God. I would love to. But, like, I'm, I, I'm sure Warner Brothers would be like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they wouldn't surprise me. That is a bummer. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this is probably the question I'm most excited about. Yes. Yes. Because I think it's we a loaded question. Yeah, we did bring oh. it up to you that fateful day two years ago today, <laughs> um, and you changed all of our minds. Yeah. So uh, kudos to you. Pardon. What? Not my mind. Oh, right, right. She oh. agreed with you from oh. the get-go. Tiffany, but Tiffany's oh. been on board. I was like, what, you Percy. don't like him? I know. <laughs> Listen, so I was always in defense of Percy because there's always something going on behind the scenes to make people do things. Yeah. It's true for characters. It's true for life. True. So we went there knowing you would be there. And Megan, I believe, raised her hand. It was me. And asked you this lovely question. And everybody had that moment so katie go ahead what are your thoughts on percy weasley's character arc how long have you got <laughs> i think we've got another 50 minutes <laughs> okay. as long as you want to uh, talk about it we're here for it. i have a lot of thoughts about this but i've had a lot of time to think about them um i can't remember what i said because <laughs> i've had <laughs> i've had okay. probably I've probably had more thoughts on it since then. Um, well, that's awesome. Percy's, co- Percy's really complicated. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's a possibility that you could consider that he may possibly be on the autistic spectrum. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Um, like, very lightly. But I think he has a big issue with um how he sees right and wrong he's very black and white yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, and i think that shows and i don't i don't know whether it's an intentional thing i don't know whether joe just wrote a character who was stern and had to stick to the rules or whether there's any bigger thought process that goes into this or not i don't write so if it was me i'd just write a stern prefect character and that would be all i thought about um (laughs) but I think I think Percy's in a really tricky position because he's got he's he's the middle child basically. Mm-hmm. Yes. He's got Bill and Charlie above him, who are both very cool, very <laughs> clever, and by the sounds of it, quite handsome. Mm-hmm. Um, at least one of whom I think I know one of them was head boy before him, but I can't remember if both of them were. I know they were both prefects. I think, I think, I think Char- one was head boy, and then I Charlie think Charlie was. Boy, was... I think. I think Bill captain was head boy and Charlie was Quidditch captain. Right. Yeah. yeah. There you go. yeah. Um, and then below him, he's got the twins who are, yeah, not as clever, not as bright, but they're very entrepreneurial, very quick witted, mm-hmm. funny, dynamic kids. Ron is Harry Potter's best friend. Right. He's fine. He's sorted. He's got his own little unique selling point. And Ginny's the only girl and the youngest. Mm-hmm. And Percy's kind of slap bang in the middle. Mm-hmm. So he kind of gets a little bit lost in the mix, I think, in that family. And one of the things that always really annoyed me with when I talk to people about Percy is that they're always like, oh, but Percy's so intelligent. And he kind of he gets a little bit of that in the book. There's always like Percy's so clever. He's always studying. He's always, you know, so lost in his books. And I think. If you're that clever, you're not always studying because mm-hmm. you know it all. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? I think there's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I don't think he's as bright as everybody thinks he is. I think Percy works really bloody hard. Yeah. Yes, to, preach. <laughs> like, yeah. To get to do as well as he can. He's. Yes. It's not natural for him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I agree. there's 
I was talking. I can't remember who I was talking to about it. It was um, somebody else at an event somewhere. Um, I think they had a microphone with them, so it's probably <laughs> recorded somewhere else. But <laughs> and they they'd said to me that 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 I hadn't really noticed before that Molly, especially Mrs. Weasley's, always praising Percy. It's always Percy. Hasn't he done so well? Hasn't he done so well? Hasn't he tried so hard? And yeah. good for mm-hmm. Percy for giving it a go. Like it. If it was natural for him, it would just be like, yeah, Percy's done it again, smashed it, hasn't he? You know, woohoo, good for Percy. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's always like, oh, well done, Percy. You put in the effort and you got what you needed. Like, good for I've you. I've never thought of that before. Yeah. Either. Yeah. The I fact that you're mentioning that, that, but... that is, that explains yeah. so much A of lot. his character. Because if you, if you think about the way that Molly speaks to Fred and George, it's always kind of, I got to correct them. I have to like, Mm. like fix something about them because they're already on their path and they're self-sufficient. She doesn't have to so much praise them to continue on. They're already on a train going. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. September 1st. Hello. No, but, (laughs) (laughs) but you're, you're so right when you say that she's focused on Percy so much, like uplifting him. Isn't that great? Percy did this. Percy did that. Yeah. You're so right. It's and it was something I'd not noticed the Molly thing before. Somebody else had said it to me, and I was like, "Yes, yes. oh my god, yes!" And then, yeah, and then there's this is the Percy thing with it, with his black and whiteness of everything. It, and I think that's where he ends himself in trouble, is mm-hmm. that in his head, rules are there. Rules are made by people who know what's best because mm-hmm. they've been made for a reason, and that is for everybody to do better basically mm-hmm. who are the people who make the rules they're the people who are in charge at hogwarts that's dumbledore mcgonagall the head boy before him whoever that was whatever you know the prefects as he was growing up whoever um when he leaves hogwarts and goes to work at the ministry it's the ministry of magic who makes the rules they're the mm-hmm. ones that tell us what we should and shouldn't do so why are they making rules that say we should do this and we shouldn't do that it's because they want what's best for the magic world so mm. when percy ends up on entirely the wrong side it's because his mindset is these are the people who know what's best why mm-hmm. would they be telling us something that's wrong mm-hmm. he's very literal not my mom he's and dad are literal. right now not yeah. dumbledore is right now because i actually just listened to this the letter that percy wrote to ron after oh. he found out that ron was prefect oh. Yeah, I just listened oh. to this on Audible today while I was listening to Order of the Phoenix. And you're like, you saying this is just like, yes, like all, like he's telling Ron to um, cling to Doris, Dolores Umbridge oh, and listen to what she says because she's a, like a wonderful woman or whatever, however he put it. He has full faith in the ministry. At the and yeah. the minister says this about Harry Potter and you should distance yourself from Harry Potter and Dumbledore isn't he's kind of cracked up at this point and you're so right (laughs) he's he's very black and white and I think that's what and I was talking to somebody about this and this is when this whole sort of possible autistic Asperger's kind of thing came up with Percy was it was like he he takes things like you said very literally Mm -hmm. everything has to be literal and it is the people who are in charge are the people who know what's best Mm-hmm. yeah yeah and it's not it, uh, it takes him a bloody long time for it to dawn on him that the last second. that was wrong and that is the only point in the entire bloody series of books when his gryffindor shows is mm-hmm. when he comes back through that portrait and does oh. the brave does the bravest thing anybody can ever do and apologizes and admits he was wrong before it that percy, <laughs> percy is total slytherin for the whole like six and a half books before that he's oh. all about ambition yeah, yeah. The sorting hat just knew that that was inside him. Yeah. Is the sorting hat like? Can the sorting hat help? Well, this is another discussion I was having with somebody, and it'd be interesting to get your thoughts. Actually, does the sorting hat sort people into what house they belong in, or what house will be best for them? Oh, oh I've like never that. had it posed that way, and I we, like yeah. that always, question. We always we always say talk about the, it, what you value. What you, yeah. What's you value. Yeah, it's what you value. Um, Which does go with what you might need. 
I agree. Also, like you, it makes you me crave think of the Neville, you know, because he really wanted to be. He's like, I'm not a Gryffindor, but you see, like his whole he character, like, you, you yeah. are You're a Gryffindor. Neville. Yeah. <laughs> Did he fulfill his prophecy in that being put in Gryffindor gave him what he needed to become that person? Yes. <gasps> yeah. If like, Harry, yeah. only, like, if yeah. if Harry had been put into Slytherin, which was definitely an option. Right. Yeah. yeah. What, would have went like, route. did he get put changed. in Gryffindor because Gryffindor was going to help him go in the right direction? Is there a little bit of like... I think like, a lot of times people know. think that the hat is not as smart as it is. They're mm-hmm. like, it's a hat that decides and it's the founder's brains. But like, in reality, well, again, first of all, this is a fictional story and Joe can make the hat as smart <laughs> as she wants it to. Which is what I'll it's, say. It's uh, real to us, though. It's real. I know. It's real, it's real. <laughs> well, but, like, you could think but... about when you make, like, if you see all those shows where they make, like, droids or whatever, mm-hmm. or, like, you know, the people, like, not, mm. they're, like, droid people, and they then become smarter, like, the computer's smarter than the person yeah. that made it. So that's, like, uh... is the hat now smarter than the people that made it? Yeah. I often wonder if the hat is a seer. Mm. Well, that's what I mean. To your head. Like... You know what I mean? Like, you're yeah. obsessed with seers. I, listen... She has this theory. I mean, we all kind of agree with her now, so it's, you know, maybe she's right, but <laughs> she has this theory that Harry is a seer. In some capacity. To, in, yes. In Often a seer capacity. of the present. What's happening now. Yes. Okay. Because you would think a lot of the times people say whenever he sees things, it's because of the Horcrux within him and it's his connection to Voldemort and that's why he's seeing things. But... If that was true, wouldn't his connection be through Voldemort's eyes or through Nagini's eyes, potentially, where in a lot of times he's like a fly on the wall? Yeah, it's like third yeah. person. Um, it's true. Get it's on board with this. We'll a, send, yeah. Listen, what we designed, or we, Megan and Katie designed a t shirt based off my theory. I just need you to say, you're a seer, Harry, and we'll send <laughs> that t shirt to you. <laughs> tell, me, tell me your size. Put it online. <laughs> Chris, I need this from you today. <laughs> You're really putting him on the spot. You haven't even told him all the reasons why. He doesn't I mean, it's another like conversation. Enough. If you no, want I, to I heard, sorry, I heard free t shirt. I'll say whatever you need. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> if I also heard free t shirt, I'd be like, yeah, what, what do you need yes, me to same, do? Same. <laughs> You're a seer, Harry. Yes. <laughs> I love it. All right. But he does. He, he sees. He sees minute. both, doesn't he? Like he sees both because you do. Like there's the bit yeah. when he's attacking. He's atta- He's attacking Arthur mm-hmm. Weasley. So right. that's obviously Nagini. But yeah, you're right. There's there is both, and whether that's just because Joe forgot what point of view she was writing from, or um, who knows. But very possible. He's Our big <laughs> thing that like sealed the deal actually is after we went to go see Cursed Child right. together. Okay. Uh, there's a part. So clearly, at this point, he's no longer a Horcrux, completely mm-hmm. gone. He's just Harry. But I will just say, Harry. in defense of people that might not agree with us, his scar was hurting again because of Delphi. I'm assuming it's because of her, right? But that's not Voldemort's soul. No, that's but it, I'm soul. saying yeah, but his scar was hurting. Voldemort's soul's gone from inside yeah. him. I mean, I don't disagree with you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Plain devil's advocate. But yeah. he, he sees how he can help. Albus, his son, almost in the same way that he was before. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a. It was one of those moments where we were like, "Oh my God, Tiffany, are you right? Is he a seer?" Well, because he said to Ginny in the play, he was like, "Well, you know how my dreams are, or something like that, like something along the lines of like, I do have dreams that are more than dreams." I'm just basically. saying. I'm just saying. I see what you're saying. You right? I either need to oh. read that book or see that play, don't I? Yeah, I will say this. Don't I read it. didn't. Go don't read it. I, brought, I started reading it, and I read what it. I'm a spoiler person. I spoiled the last book for me. I read the last. I read the epilogue before I read this full seventh book. I can't. Um, you. But I read. Who are you? Like, I know. I'm a horrible person. Chris, she's the worst it, kind of person. It helps me. It helps me. Like when I read the end of a book, it helps me when I'm reading it to like calm myself down, being it's, like, you yeah. know how it's gonna end. Like, it's like an anxiety could, yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so okay. I read what happened in Cursed Child, and I was like, yeah, I'm not reading this garbage. And then. <laughs> um, we saw the play her. and my my entire opinion was changed. It's so it, good. It's so just good. Meant to but, be. but that's the I mean that's the thing is like I I've spent twenty years of my life reading scripts. So it's it's never gonna be good on paper. It's never gonna yeah, be as good on paper as it's gonna be like, 
saying that you might get it more than like me reading it because yeah. you know how to read a script. Maybe. And you... I don't agree that they should have published it, to be honest. Yeah. I, agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. But, but it's just but like I people. Also, yeah. yeah. I also yeah. appreciate that no, nowhere near as many people would be having the access to it. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you need that. Right. It works like both ways. Yeah. There's some one thing like yeah. with with like plays and things like Broadway and all of those things. Like it can be crazy expensive, which is unfortunate mm. because that's something like mm. I love seeing. You know, something live like that. Yeah. And the people that do it, they love performing it you we're know very much the, Broadway like, they always say like they're never room. gonna get I... the same rush <laughs> doing something on stage yeah. than you know yeah. a movie or two yeah, I just right. super recommend seeing it though honestly yes. it's I will very... when I remortgage the house there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's expensive oh, I think it's actually I think it's cheaper to see it on Broadway than it is to see oh, wow. it we were fortunate it where we got um we got tickets that were 40 bucks you for... should... oh you did, did but... you do the... we had to no we no we waited like a year and a half to get far in advance yeah and they were they were like nosebleeds tiffany actually got a nose i literally got a nosebleed in the nosebleeds <laughs> they no were the seat. best There's they were no great seat. seats yeah okay because so i think we i'm, I'm slight yeah i think i'm slightly elite not elitist about it but i want to see it and i want to actually see it not yeah you know look at it from 300 meters away but equally yeah. and i know i know there is a possibility i can get access to seats mm-hmm but we still have to pay for them. And yeah. like in the West End, I think the top price seats are 200 pounds a seat per play. For two nights. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's, the, yeah that's nearly $1,000 for two people to see yeah. a play. Goodness the gracious. whole thing. Yeah. And that's, but I mean, I, that's I think it, it, some of them for Eng- or England, for New York are. Yeah. Even like I almost went to, I wanted that. to go see Hamilton and it was like one ticket was like the cheapest in New York to see Hamilton was like $300. I'm like, well, I guess I won't be seeing it. So yeah. just listen to the soundtrack. Go and see Come From Away instead. It's a lot cheaper and a lot better. <laughs> I, don't want to, I, don't actually, I want to see it. It just came to Cleveland and yeah, my dad and my sister saw it. Yeah. It's, it's so good. good. Yeah. We saw it. We were in New York in March and we saw Come From Away and it was, it, honestly, I cried from about three and a half minutes in. Aww. solidly for like 90 minutes um <laughs> but it's it's, it's about 9 11 isn't it yeah oh, oh man yeah but I it's would um it. but it is it's like the most upbeat uplifting musical ever so it it's about 9 11 but it's about this town called Gan- i'm probably explaining stuff you already know but it's about a town called gander in newfoundland which used to be the biggest airport in the world because it was where before jet engines were ex- were invented planes would have to stop to refuel oh yeah after they crossed the atlantic so it's mm-hmm. this enormous airport in this teeny weeny little town in the middle of absolutely nowhere mm-hmm. um and when 9 11 happened and they closed the north american airspace literally every plane that was in about 500 mile radius had to land immediately and that was the only airport they could land at so this tiny little 7,000 population town in newfoundland literally doubled in size in the space of about eight hours and yeah, like that's crazy. 40 plane 40 jumbo jets landed there and it's about how this town just took in all these people and looked after them so it's yeah. it is oh. the most upliftingly happy 9-11 musical yeah. you could ever imagine but i have to say it's opened in london i do want to see it in london but i think seeing it in new york mm-hmm. is special because yeah there's there's like there's a there's a storyline about a woman whose son is a firefighter with um uh station two which was the one that i think was nearest to nine, nine nearest to the world train center i think um so like it means something to people in new york yeah yeah Absolutely. yeah in london yeah. with just that we're like i remember it i remember sitting and watching it on happen unfold on yeah. the tv in front of me yeah but it does it's so foreign to us mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, it's kind of I don't know. There's a, like a, there's an emotional disconnect where you can go, oh god, that that is such an awful right. thing to happen. Mm-hmm. But it's not at it's not this city that we're sat in right now. It's not yeah. my friends, my family yeah. that were literally. Um, yeah. It's beautiful though. It's such a good show. Um, oh. Yeah, but yes, maybe, 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 maybe I'll go and see Curse Child. We're in, back in <laughs> New York. We're going to New York just after Boston. I was uh, going to say you should shoot up. Uh, yeah. Shoot up there. Yeah. We're having a little bit of a vacay either side of it. We're going to do a bit of America while we're in America. So, yeah, we're going to go. <laughs> um, well, let us maybe know be, if you do. That would be amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you ever come to Cleveland, it's a great city. (laughs) (laughs) We have some really good food here. I will say that. I have been to Ohio. I'm sure I've been to Ohio. (laughs) (laughs) Cincinnati in Ohio. Yeah, Yeah. it is. Yeah, Yeah, I've been to Cincinnati. Did you go to the Comic Con there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that one's pretty big. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And yeah. we went to the zoo, and the zoo in Cincinnati was lovely. Oh, the, yeah, and very, very good zoo. Is there. What is her name? Fiona. Fiona. Yeah, Fiona, we met Fiona, yeah. Well, not She's so tiny. But, but also her. large. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, back onto Harry Potter. All right, right. <laughs> I know. We like um, to get deep and sweaty on this podcast. Yes. <laughs> was, so since they did ask you to come back for Deathly Hallows, um, was working on that film especially emotional, seeing it all come to an end? Like, were you were you able to be there for anybody's last days? And everybody, what was everybody was some every day was somebody's last day. Oh, like man. every day. Um, there was a scene that eh, it didn't work. That's fine. But there's we try we tried desperately. And it, I'm gonna go completely off here, but um in one of the original versions of the script fred's death was more mm. not complete but it was more than it is in the film mm-hmm. and slowly but surely they kind of whittled it down to what it is and i think it actually works quite nicely from a filmic point of view for how they've kind of molded it but part of that was obviously that you got a bit more percy right mm-hmm. than you do um and one of the conversations that I remember having with David Yates was the kind of we need we want to give a nod to Percy being back obviously we've gone to the effort of recontracting you and paying you to be here so you know you you're not just a random extra at the back you're you're Percy Mm -hmm. and I'll be sure people who love Harry Potter will know that but we need we want to kind of try and give a little nod to the redemption story that we're just ignoring because we don't have time (laughs) Um, yes and that's fine so there was a little bit, and it is in some of the behind the scenes stuff when you know when the Order of the Phoenix kind of come burst through the Great Hall doors and like the Magnificent Seven in that kind of V shape. Yeah. And there's a little moment right at the end of that that doesn't make it because the timing would just be really off if they did. But there's a little moment where Percy kind of quietly creeps in and joins the period, like the little triangle, and the twins look at him like, "All right," and there's this, "All right." moment and it's really yeah. nice but just didn't work that's fine um but when we were filming that that was um alan rickman's last day was in the middle of that mm, and david oh knew this as well i think uh mm. yes so like and you, you guys have probably seen it on like the sort of behind the scenes stuff but when you rap and it's somebody's last day jamie who was the first assistant director calls the rap and then announces the wrap of whoever's last day it is so we'll go and that's a wrap on today it's also a wrap on david thewlis alan rickman jim broadbent whoever and everyone gives a big round of applause there's hugs all round. a bottle of champagne appears you know <laughs> and but at the same time it's just somebody's last it you know we're still going yeah. we're still working tomorrow yeah They've yeah got work to do you know the camera guys are like yeah thanks very much we're off um <laughs> overtime kicks in after 20 minutes so um yeah um so it's kind of yeah it's it's sad but you kind of go oh lovely to see you thank you know it's been mm-hmm. great way to see you again kind of thing and, and off you go my last day was um when we were filming the stuff in the courtyard with death eaters one side everyone else mm-hmm. the other kind of mm-hmm. thing and you know the weird Draco Voldemort hug. Like <laughs> uh, what is that? Anyway, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so that scene was my last scene, but it was also there was about thirty of us who finished that day. Oh yeah. So and it was the day. There's a lovely. There's a massive cast photo of us all on that set, and it was that day. Um. So it was my last day. It was Ivana Lynch's last day. Uh, Afshan, Scarlett Byrne. Devon Murray, I think he finished. Alfie Enoch finished that. They're like loads and loads and loads and loads of us who've been there for years. Mm. And I remember, I remember Jamie calling rap, and then like the list of names went on for about. <laughs> it's like, and it's Chris Rankin's last day. It's so and so and so and so and so and so and blah 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 blah. And we'd done that photo, and like it felt like a really big day. Um, 
and then sort of obviously we wrapped we did all that everyone kind of had a little bit of a hug and a you know thank you and shook hands with people and said thank you very much for having me here for the last 11 years um and then everyone kind of left because it was a thursday and people had work tomorrow and that's fine and then there was maybe like 10 of us who just hung around mm. and were sort of stood there because there was this kind of mutual feeling of when we turn around and walk off this set we're never walking back onto a harry potter set again uh. and it was really really weird and i remember i remember just this kind of we weren't saying nobody was saying anything we we're just kind of there you know just kind of hanging out and yeah you know when you kind of like run out of conversation but don't want to leave um, yeah. and then eventually it was kind of like right okay um cool let's you kind of went back to your trailer and got out of your costume for the last time and then got in a car for the last time and i remember i remember sitting in the back of a car going back to the hotel kind of almost like something out of the end of a film itself you know when you're kind of looking out the back windscreen as the car there's that kind of i'm never like yeah. so God, how many times I'd been driven out of Leaveston Studios yeah. in a car and we'd come back the next day and like that kind of weird this is it. Yeah. 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 Eleven whole years and like probably the best job I'll ever have. And it's that's it. Like it's just gone. But they'll carry on with work tomorrow. Like it's <laughs> like nothing's yeah. changed. Yeah. Very it's a very strange feeling. Yeah. The ends of chapters of your life or yeah emotions are always a little strange and sometimes I wonder like as I'm not not that I'm old but as I get older I I sometimes pull myself out and think these are the days you know these are the days you'll remember yeah so that was Uh, one of it's one one of of yours yeah it's yeah it's it's still a weird day and I mean I don't think I mean that was oh my god that was 2000 and 11 10 yeah 10, 11 that was 2011 i guess wow uh, and it really like i don't think i don't think even at that stage like 10 11 years into it i didn't i didn't really anticipate that i'd still be talking to people about it in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are yeah. Yeah. you kind of kind of start to think about putting that chapter of your life to bed a little bit but yeah, the, the further we go, the more you realise that it's it's always going to be there somewhere. Like, yeah. Bubbling away. <laughs> One of our listeners commented, Janelle, and she said, is someone cutting onions in here? Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Little tears. Yeah. It's emotional. Yeah. yeah. I just think about... Um, that like little compilation video that they put together of all those final cuts. Yeah. And it's just like a little, it's not long. It's just like a couple Mm. second clip of, you know, Alan Rickman and David standing there with with the board. And, and I think there's, I'm sure that there's a couple seconds of that scene. The picture was your last day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And like that. And then of course it ends with, Rupert, Dan, and Emma's right. last day of crying and oh, hugging, I, and then you're just like, Ugh. I cannot <laughs> imagine what that was like for them. Yeah, yeah. Just... especially with starting so young. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in... I mean, that was yeah. their that was the majority of their life. Their childhood, yeah. 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 It's yeah. crazy. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. I mean, and what I don't know, I don't know what you think you're gonna do after that. Right. Like I had no idea what I was going to do after that, but I was perfectly content with going and making cups of tea for famous people. Like, <laughs> which is what I signed up for for like a year and a half was photocopying and making tea because that's where you start when you go into mm-hmm. TV and film production. Yeah. Doesn't matter that you've been in spent eleven years on the most successful film franchises. No, still making tea. Um, but <laughs> that's how you learn. It's fine. Um, but like, what when you're Daniel Radcliffe or Emma Watson or Rupert Grin, like? I I can't imagine how weird that is to kind of to have to put that to bed like that. Yeah. yeah. It must be. Cut all your hair off huge. into a pixie cut and just rock it. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what that is what I, I also did. I brought her picture and I was like, I, and my my hair is crazy curly. So like, <laughs> why I thought I'd have hair like hers, I don't know. But I was like, mm-hmm. I want my hair cut like this. The girl's like, Are you sure? I'm like, Yep. She cut it all off. I mean, it looked cute, but like, <laughs> I have curly hair. <laughs> it doesn't look exactly the same. 
Oh, you're funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, do you have any new? Well, we know you're coming to LeagueCon. Any other Potter uh, adventures? Upcoming. Potter adventures. Yeah. I mean, there's always another Potter adventure on the horizon somewhere. Um, I, I do. I love. I love doing conventions and Comic Cons and Harry Potter things because, because I'm a big geek. Like I, I, I'm a big Harry Potter geek. I love it. Um, and I love like too. talking to people about it. I've always loved talking to people about it. Like I said, I was, you know, I was on a Harry Potter forum you know discussing fan theories but when the fourth book had just come out like those were the days I, that was a yeah. long wait <laughs> how long I was, was the wait between three and four i that can't remember the fourth book came out like two or three months before i had my audition if that like yeah, the summer I think, I summer 2000 read all four of them before the books or the movies came out yeah the summer before the movies came out is when i read all of them and then i had to wait those were the good days yeah um so <laughs> yeah. i i am like i'm a fully signed up harry potter fan Good. um very fortunate and very very lucky that it's been my job for 20 years as well mm-hmm. that i get to be a fan and do the other side of it as well which is ridiculous um <laughs> but i so i love i love doing events and i love talking to people about it and what i really really love is that you know I and and I guess most of us were kind of we're we're essentially the first generation Harry mm. Potter fans. We're people who discovered either the books and or the movies as they were being released. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. But the number of kids that weren't even born. Yeah. Right. Like even some now even weren't even born when the last films were released, which is oh my terrifying. Goodness. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> no. like I was, yeah. I was at this event yesterday and I was talking to five and six, you know, six five six seven year olds and yeah. you're like you yeah. weren't you weren't alive when the last film was released let alone the first <laughs> film <laughs> like we're fully second generation and that's mm-hmm. that's wonderful yeah you know. it's timeless yeah it's, it's it a is. timeless adventure story and even like you said the young ones i my first graders who are you know six and seven and they ask you know oh mrs o'malley what's what's your favorite book and i'm like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, and they're like, I love Harry Potter, and of course they've never read it, but they've seen it. Yeah. And it's exciting, and they can relate to you about it, and it's I mean, I can't believe that a six-year-old can sit through Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows and not need (laughs) counselling, but... (laughs) I think Sorcerer's Stone is probably more accurate for them. Yeah. But, um, they just, they love it, too. And it's it's great. It's great for me to be able to connect with my students yeah. About something that I love so much and especially something that's literature. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's great. I think it's she caught she I don't know what it what came over her the day that she decided to write that on train, but mm-hmm. she she found something very, very special and she did. Yeah. It it does wonderful things for people. I know that sounds really schmaltzy and cheesy, but I think Harry Potter is a does a huge amount of good in the world. Great. Yes. You know, like I, I work with a um, charity in the states called Transfiguring Adoption, who do amazing things through Harry Potter that helps foster kids and adopted kids understand mm-hmm. who they are and feel better about their lives and what they've come from and what they're going to. I, I work with, you know, like there's, um, yeah. like charities like Lumos, which obviously mm-hmm. is the obvious one, who do incredible things because of Harry Potter events that bring people like leaky and muggle net and all these people mm-hmm. that an hpef back in the day who remembers like mm. those events from way back when i was talking about that earlier like there's i, I used to do these events for this hpef who were the harry potter educational fan on who did literary events about harry potter and symposiums a, around the u.s i did one in salem and san francisco and oh, cool. florida and all sorts of places and the amount of friendships and relationships yeah. and things that have been created because of a book mm-hmm. like yeah. a, a kid's book at yes. that. like right. it's, yeah i don't know it's it's amazing yes it's certainly incredible it is on our episodes usually we'll have um a fan story section and people will write in their potter story and hearing how potter has touched so many yeah. different ages different just people in all different walks of life it's yeah. insane yeah. Well, one of the gotten- re- little kids yeah 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 and one of the one of the things that i 
that I've noticed over the last maybe three years or so um, is because my partner Ness comes to all my events with me. She's essentially my assistant as well as being a, an amazing person and human and everything else. You know, we live together, we work together, we do everything together. It's great. Um, mm. But we meet an awful lot of um, predominantly gay, bi, trans, queer, gender non-binary, whatever they want to call themselves, young people. And mm -hmm. I say young people because I mean like literally eight, I think eight upwards at the moment is what I'm working with, who come up with, I, I don't know, either their sort of rainbow hair or something that identifies them as unique and brilliant but they come over and they talk to us and they say i am this is this is who i am mm -hmm. and harry potter has been my safe space it's been the place mm -hmm. that i can escape to where i feel i've got somebody and it's a fictional character which is awful sometimes but i understand harry harry understands me with he's this kid that whose family have whose family that he has don't love him and he has his chosen family who are his chosen family of wizards and witches and they're the people who look after him and who love him mm -hmm. um and i think it's and it is it's wonderful and one of the things that we're trying to do nessie and i my partner is because we're very much involved with the lgbtq community and raising awareness we're allies I, thank not, you i'm not yeah. entirely yeah. 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 not entirely sure yes. that i like the term ally because I, I don't know anyway but that's you're just that's being a I, good human I, yeah. that's what i that's yeah. what i feel like yeah. i am being if we're if doing that's, what's right if that's going to call me an ally awesome that's what mm -hmm. i am but i don't know i i feel a bit weird about that word but um so we so we have we have when we as i said we, we, we love it all and we love everybody but we we're very keen on drag so we have we've we've kind of created our own house now we are the that house of awesome. chris ness um, <laughs> um what we're trying to do well what we are doing is we sell little pin badges at our events now with house of chris ness on them and we raise money for charity for a charity called the albert kennedy trust that um supports homeless and homeless lgbtq plus kids and LGBT, LGBTQ plus kids who live in hostile environments is what they call it. So mm -hmm. they essentially it fits very nicely into the Harry Potter thing as well. Um, mm -hmm. It's amazing. But like yeah. Harry Potter can bring people together like that. Yes. And, I think that's, yeah. and, it, and it's created a safe space for people like that, you know, who don't necessarily have the love and support that they, or the understanding, not necessarily yeah. the love. Doesn't mean they're not loved if they're not understood. But right. yeah, you know, so it's a safe space and us harry potter fans we're our chosen family and it's marvelous That's true. <laughs> it is so true mm -hmm. yeah. i will buy a plethora of those badges when yes. we are oh, in God, they, come, they, they are coming with me everywhere now so. yes good we would love good. them we would love a ton yeah we uh, it's it's obviously close to our hearts too so yeah yeah thank you for yeah. being an amazing human yeah. being. yeah we have a facebook group called swisher support where people can come and that is their their safe space and we did, uh, during the month of Pride, Megan and Katie designed some wonderful Swish and Flick Pride merchandise that we Amazing. sold, and all of our proceeds went to um, the charity Glisten. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, bro. Yeah, so we it's get it. We get it. it. Yeah. We, we get it. Yes, yeah, Sarah yeah. and I are I our think... allies or uh, chosen family, yeah. and we're just, I think there was one episode where, Katie, you said something about people just want to be normal. I said, well, well you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's a relative term. Like you there's are. nothing. <laughs> and I think that's a nice Some, thing about yeah. like our generation is that like, and I said this my entire life, like, I don't care who you are, what you are, whatever, what you believe in, as long as you're a good person, that's all that matters yeah. to me. Like yeah. good human status. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's still hard for, for us, Katie and I to, um, to, to understand that that is normal. Because yeah. in a lot of situations, we are not deemed normal. Yeah, yeah. You're not so, someone else is normal. Right. Now, so, now so don't get me wrong. When you say that to us, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, that is normal. Yeah. I need to, like, realize that more. Yes. Um, and it's almost like you have to change how you think, even mm -hmm. though 
I am correct for just being who I am and being normal, but society says mm-hmm. that's not normal. Yeah, society's you know what I mean? dumb. <laughs> you're normal. <laughs> you're weirdos like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're all oh, normal. Yeah. <laughs> just say, none of us here are normal. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. But because of that, we are the norm. That's yeah. right. So. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. I love hearing that. So Yeah, thank you. Yes, honestly. And thank you so much. I just want to say one thing. Today. I saw that you, because you went to Pride. Was Pride in England like just like oh, last yeah, weekend or something? Oh yeah, it was. Something? Well, we have we have um, obviously there's there's a specific Pride. Like there's a there's Pride Month, which is the mm-hmm. the time we do all the awareness and everything like that. Um, but then individual cities have their own Pride festivals. So Pride, we had Pride in Cardiff, which is our local city, just out down the road here, um, where everything is filmed. By the way, Tor- Doctor Who, Torchwood, Sherlock. Uh, his dark materials is being filmed there. Anyway, loads of stuff. Um, and yeah, so it was Pride last weekend. Yeah, last weekend in Cardiff. And you were singing. I I had the honor, and it's the second year I've done it now. You, I've host, you hosted. You both hosted, were very. I ho- yeah, I hosted the main stage <laughs> yeah, on Sunday, like, oh, which I'm was. Like, that's terribly enjoyable good fun. to listen to. <laughs> so I, I got I got to sing musical theatre and wear my platform heels and be fun. And awesome. I am here for your platform heel. Let excellent. me say that. <laughs> excellent. They are they are significantly huge. Is they are. <laughs> um, yeah, they only come out on special occasions, but yeah. um, there's, a, awesome. there's a lot of pride events happening in October for LGBTQ History Month. I oh, guess. cool. Um, because that our local city, I guess it's not our local city anymore because we just moved, but where we used to live in Kent, which is like a local college town, they had never done a pride event before. Um, just because they always assumed that they would only do them in June and school is out then. Mm. So they're like, oh, well, mm. let's do one in October for History Month. Mm. So they're yeah. doing their very first Pride cool. event in October. Yeah, mm. we're, we're, I think we're tremendously lucky in the UK. that, I was, And one of my friends, um, JJ, who's involved with organizing Cardiff Pride, um, is involved. He's involved with something. I can't remember. What the, there's a Pride network, basically. There's a, a committee that work across all pride festivals across the uk and they run i was asking him sort of because he's literally been at one somewhere in the uk every weekend since forever by the science of it but it starts in about january and finishes in like early december there's a pride festival somewhere from wow. like people in fur coats and snow boots <laughs> through, That's all awesome. the way through the summer. yeah pride yeah it can, i mean it should be all the time frankly but whenever okay. yeah it's always it such a be. happy time, you know? I Everyone agree. Just like, ugh, I just love yeah. it. Yeah. No, it's it's important. And I think, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't. I mean, I don't, know what, I don't know what the situation's like in the US. And I know it is sort of fairly interchangeable depending on whereabouts in the US you are, for instance. True. Like, Very true. Obviously, New York, New York is probably a lot more accepting than, yeah. you know, the middle of nowhere in Missouri or somewhere. But mm-hmm. whatever, you know, but yeah. Yeah. it's becoming a very large large country with lots of opinions so yeah. Yeah. different everywhere yeah and the, co- the coasts are a lot different to the middle and mm-hmm. the middle's a lot different to the bits between the middle and the edges and yeah it's all yeah yeah very, very interesting. interesting but yeah i think the uk is getting getting much better at it not being anything other than a very inclusive place at the moment well mm-hmm. apart from the whole terrible yeah anyway don't start me <laughs> all night. Um, i will say that we felt incredibly accepted everywhere that we went when we were over in the uk and it was a lovely feeling so yeah good yeah yeah, yeah. edinburgh right. for life oh my god oh, <laughs> i want to live there yes <laughs> Okay, we have come to the end, and we want to give you a big thank you before we roll into our um, social media bit that we do. Truly, we are so honored and and thankful yeah. to have spoken with you today. And it's it was been just a lot really, of fun. Just, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, you were yeah, delightful to talk yeah. to. If you ever want to talk to us again, come find us. <laughs> oh, literally, yeah. I've got like another. I've got like another two hours of material to get through. So yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> we could do. We could make it as many episodes as you want. <laughs> But I've run out of wine, so oh. that brings time to end. <laughs> I, do have, I do have a request of you for the end of this episode. When I when I wrap the episode and do the closing outline, I had James do this for me as well. He did pretty great, and he yeah. did really good. So he would. 
<laughs> yeah. So at the end of every episode, I say that concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening and don't let the muggles get you down. But what I would like from you is if I say part of that and when I point to you, you say, don't let the muggles get you down. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Meg's going to do her bit, then I'll roll in and point to you. <laughs> also, we will legitimately bring you a you're a see or Harry shirt in Boston. Yeah, we'll give it yeah. to you in Boston. That's perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll swap you pins for t-shirts. Awesome. awesome. What size would you like? I'll we can, still we'll give donate. you money for yeah. the pins because I want to donate some money to <laughs> oh, that cost. Yeah. Um, it, I think I'm small. Okay. okay we'll bring it. Do you want another one for Ness? Oh, uh, that would be amazing. That is unnecessary, but amazing. She's also, I think, a small. Perfect. Okay. We share, yeah, we share wardrobes, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't judge. It's a deal. Do it. we'll do it. That way. Yeah. <laughs> do you like the shirt? Me too. Great. <laughs> <laughs> You get it on even days, I'll wear it on odd days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll do our little social media spiel. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook at Swish and Flick Podcast and on Twitter and Instagram at Swish Flickcast. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube um, where our vlogs are posted along with our podcast. And you can follow us on Patreon to get exclusive access to the Felix Files, our bi-monthly bonus episodes, a chance to be a guest on the Felix Files, live video chats every month, and lots more. So if that sounds fun, make sure you head on over to patreon.com forward slash Swish Flickcast and choose your support level. And also, thank you to all of our current patrons. We literally couldn't do this without you. Yes. We really appreciate it. Um, Lastly, if you want to check out our website, it's swishflickcast.com, and that is where all of our information is compiled into one place, along with merchandise, which we actually just released new shirts yeah, for Hogwarts. Yeah, we did. Back to school day. Mm -hmm. We released some pride shirts if you want to go and check those out. You can be brave like a lion, wise like Wait, an eagle. What? Not pride shirts, house pride, house pride shirts. shirts. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we got new shirts. Loyal like a badger, and ambitious like a snake. <laughs> yeah, go check it out. It, yes, they're pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty amazing. Yeah. All right, are you ready, Chris? Ready. Okay, that concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and don't let the muggles get you down. I love that you've actually got color coordinated um, microphones. Yeah, I know. I'm the only, I'm the add one out. I lost mine, so. <laughs> but you are coordinating with your top, which helps. I am. So. Yeah. yeah. It's swish color, so that's good. When we talk to your good friend uh, James Peyton. Oh God, yeah, you poor people. I saw. <laughs> I love James. He's a delight. He had nothing but great things to say about you. <laughs> I know, I, I pay him quite well. So. <laughs> that's good, that's good. They do the, the same for me. I get paid quite well to hang out with them. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Truly, thank you so, yeah. so much. Thank you. Yes, thank thank you. you, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to see you in Boston. It's going to be such yes. a good time. I'm excited. Yeah, it'll be amazing. Yeah. It'll yes. be amazing.